Hi, my name is Jim Worth. I'm the Black Lung Program Director for Stone Mountain Health Services. Thank you for coming today for this uh, event where we're going to talk about a variety of things happening with the Stone Mountain Health Services Black Lung Program. Uh, the first thing that I want to do is um, uh, make a very exciting announcement. Um, back in 2018, the Stone Mountain Black Lung Team received the Virginia Community Healthcare Association's Team of the Year Award. Later that same year, last fall, um, they received the Virginia Rural Health Association's Best Practices in Rural Health. The uh, executive director of the Virginia Rural Health Association was so impressed with what the team had been doing that she decided that she wanted to nominate the Black Lung Program Team for the National Rural Health Association's Outstanding Rural Health Organization Award. And I'm pleased to say that uh, we won. Um, and uh, we are um, the 2019 recipient of the NRHA Outstanding Rural Health Organization Award. Um, this is their most prestigious and competitive award, um, and uh, I think it reflects well on the organization and, and what we've done. And I'd like to just summarize a little bit about why I think um, they received this award. The biggest thing is that um, there are 15 grantees in the, uh, who receive money from the Health Resources and Services Administration, 15 grantees across 15 states. Stone Mountain is the only grantee here in Virginia. We've been doing services for, since 1991 and anticipate continuing into the foreseeable future. Our two clinics here in Van Santon and St. Charles see 2,500 minors a year, which is about 20% of all the minors across the country. So here in Virginia, we see 20%. Um, the other 14 states see 80%. We see, we see 2,500 minors a year. We submit about 500 claims a year uh, to the Department of Labor for federal black lung benefits. Of those 500 or so, 350 move forward to um, get a decision by the Department of Labor. Um, and nationally, minors will win one out of every three of those cases. Um, minors we represent win two out of every three of those cases. So um, ours are twice as likely to be successful um, in winning claims. Um, when we do win claims, um, we win, we've won, uh, our minors get about, about $200,000 in um, monthly benefits, and um, the past several years we've won three to four million, three million to four million dollars um, in back pay benefits for our minors. We win about 20% of all the claims in the country at the Department of Labor level. And I think it's for those reasons that um, they receive the um, National Rural Health Association's Outstanding Rural Health Organization Award. The second reason that we're here um, is um, to talk about um, uh, the um, collaboration that we're having with the uh, Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board. And we're doing a variety of things, and I'm going to let um, Tiffany Goff, excuse me, I'm going to let Tiffany Goff, who's the Workforce Center's manager for the Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board, talk a little bit about the collaboration and um, what they see as the the future of our working together. So, Tiffany. Good afternoon. Um, I am Tiffany Goff. I work with the Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board. Um, we are very excited about any our collaboration with Stone Mountain. Um, we have centers currently located um, a comprehensive center in Richlands um, at the Virginia Career Works Richlands Appalachian One Stop. Um, it's on Front Street. We also have a location in Norton and a location in Duffield, and then we have drop-out or drop-in centers throughout the area that provide only one service. Um, so we are excited about the opportunity of collaborating with Stone Mountain at the St. Paul Center, St. Charles Center, um, and we plan to. Those plans are still evolving, but we would like to be able to, for folks to be able to access some or all of our services through that center. Um, we currently help people do job search, um, resume writing for those who don't know how to write resumes or who are having difficulty finding employment based on their current resume. Um, we can do job placement if we have job placements within that area. Um, we also um, address, look at the skill sets of folks and try and plug them in. If they need retraining, we have short-term training facilities and, and centers that can do those things. And we also have some longer-term um, programs through the community colleges. Um, 
So we are looking at all of those kinds of services. If, if you know people who are in the area that already need those services or who will be, if they're graduating from high school this year or if they're in transition from one employment to the other, um, we'd be happy to sit with them and kind of go through what services might be appropriate. And if we don't actually provide those, our partners that are within our workforce system do, and we are happy to connect them to those <coughs> services. So one of the... <laughs> One of the uh, things that we're most excited about in collaborating with the Workforce Development Board is um, the, the new site in St. Charles is right across the street from our Black Lung uh, Clinic. And um, one of the things that, that they're going to be doing is helping to develop some special um, efforts to provide education and, and retraining for our minors with Black Lung, many of whom um, didn't want to stop working, don't don't want to be unemployed and want to be able to continue to work and so we're going to be working with the, the workforce the Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board to um, help some of them who want to to get back to work. Um, there also as you know we have some issues with substance abuse in Southwest Virginia <coughs> and we will be collaborating with um, the Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board to um, provide some special assistance and training for people who are in recovery um, so that from substance abuse so that they can um, they have difficulty finding jobs and this will help them um, get some uh, training and education that will help them get employed again. So we're excited about that collaboration. The, the third item that we're here today to talk about um, is the fact that um, thanks to the efforts of um, Senator Warner, Senator King, Congressman Griffith, and um, Congressman um, Bobby Scott, um, there was an in increase in the budget for the Gla Black Lung Clinics program. Um, significant increase in funding. Um, we want to thank um, our um, congressional delegation for taking the lead in getting some extra money. That extra money um, al is allowing us to uh, purchase digital x-ray machines. We've been using the, the old kind uh, for years and years and years and finally are, we're in the uh, 21st century and we'll have um, our digital x-rays <coughs> up and running here in Van Sant and we'll be um, up and running in St. Charles soon. Um, and that uh, will allow us to provide better services to the minors. Um, and again, without the, the work of our delegation, that probably wouldn't have gone through. So I want to thank them and um, ask Shane Clem from Senator Warner's office uh, to come up and make a couple of remarks. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. You must drive a little faster, too, <laughs> you and Cody. So I got here a little slower than you guys. Uh, it's great being in Lake County this morning. <coughs> great to be in Buckingham County. And... Uh, if you can't be happy on Lover's Gap Road, where can you be happy? It's got to be the best named road in Virginia. <laughs> uh, Senator, I'm a third generation minor myself, you guys didn't know that. Uh, my dad was uh, worked 30 years in Buckingham County. My grandfather worked in Harlan County. Senator Warner wanted me to read, uh, sent over a letter, congratulate you guys on an award you received today. And I want to read a few lines from that uh, letter from Senator Warner for you guys. This prestigious award recognizes the effectiveness and importance of the health care you provide to residents of Southwest Virginia. The Black Lung Program Services that your organization offers are particularly commendable. Minors put their health and often their lives on the line to help power our nation. We owe to those battling black lung disease to make sure they get the care they need. The staff of Stone Mountain Health Services does this each day. We are fortunate to have a health center with such a strong dedication to serving their fellow community members in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Uh, Mark, I won't read the whole thing, but thanks, Jim. Thanks for having me. Thanks for everything you guys do. Really, it's a, a real asset to Southwest Virginia, Virginia. We appreciate you. I also want to ask Cody Mumpower from Congressman Morgan Griffith's office to come up and make a few remarks. Thank you. Uh, thanks again for having me. I was up in St. Charles earlier today and just want to reiterate uh, what the Congressman has said in his letter and I'll, I'll read that to you. Um, congressman says, I would like to offer my congratulations to Stone Mountain Health Services and the Black Lung Program team here on winning the Outstanding Rural Health Organization Award. This recognition highlights the excellent work being done to treat the minors in our communities who suffer from black lung. We all know the challenges many rural communities face in, rece in receiving medical care. Issues such as access and transportation limit options for patients and, burden and burdens health care providers. On top of these challenges, black lung is a harsh disease. Despite the difficulties, Stone Mountain Health Services provide exceptional care to minors and their families. Um, it 
it team, its team has used all the resources at their disposal for the diagnosis and treatment of black lung. The, compa the compassion, dedication, and medical knowledge of the staff have provided comfort to many and are an inspiration to all who care about rural health. I am proud to support the black lung program team's effort to fight this affliction and I am glad that they have earned this prestigious recognition. I also hope that this award will concentrate renewed attention on the plight of those affected by black lung. So congratulations on behalf of Congressman Griffiths. Thank you. The uh, next part uh, that I want to talk about is some of the expanded services that um, we're offering through the black lung program. One of the things that um, we're very excited about is that we have a new medical director coming on. Dr. Drew Harris is a pulmonologist with the University of Virginia and um, is leading a collaboration between Stone Mountain and the University of Virginia in a variety of ways. Probably the most exciting of which is that we will be um, exploring the possibility of um, Stone Mountain being a site for lung transplant evaluations uh, for Stone Mountain patients but also for other individuals. So the idea would be to use the telehealth resources um, through the University of Virginia to bring minors here um, for evaluation uh, for lung transplants. Um, we also are looking at doing some education through um, something called ECHO, Project ECHO, um, on pulmonary uh, issues so that the primary care providers around here will have a better sense of, of what some of the issues are that, that face um, minors. Uh, and um, Dr. Harris also is um, doing ex examinations for us. We're very excited to have him on board. He's brought a lot of energy. Uh, another new staff member who we have is probably unique um, for her position outside of universities. She, um, Margie Toman, um, is joining us. She is uh, going to be our research and development coordinator as well as a site manager. And she brings with her a wealth of experience and uh, um, knowledge and contacts here in the region. Um, she's going to be helping us with grants and, and doing um, work with uh, foundations and so on. So we're excited that she'll be joining us starting next week. We, um, between Margie and Drew coming on board, we've decided that we're going to create um, what we're calling right now a Rural Respiratory Institute. Um, but that's starting now as a collaboration between Stone Mountain and the University of Virginia, um, both the, medicine, both the um, College of Medicine as well as with the telehealth, um, their Center for Telehealth. Uh, what we'll be doing is doing um, research, uh, intervention, and education. We'll be um, doing the echo education, but we'll also have uh, medical providers coming over to Stone Mountain um, to do um, training with us around um, black lungs so that they can um, serve their patients better. And we'll also be collaborating with local providers as well as regional universities and universities across the country on rural respiratory issues. We um, have already mentioned that, uh, that we'll be doing telehealth uh, with the University of Virginia. We also are going to be um, one of the few uh, black lung clinics to expand telehealth throughout our system so that we'll use them, uh, telehealth across of our, our clinics as well as to connect to other clinics and potentially for our uh, benefits um, counseling as well as consulting with other organizations. We uh, really want to make sure that we're using technology to its fullest. Um, another thing that we're doing that probably is unique across the country is that we've noticed that um, through some research, some preliminary research, we've noticed really high rates of depression and anxiety um, and trauma and even suicidality among our minors coming in for, um, to receive the, uh, for their claims. And so we've decided that we're going to um, uh, add a uh, case manager and add a behavioral health provider to our staff so that we can help address some of the, the behavioral health needs, some of the social determinants of health, um, and help our minors and their uh, loved ones in, in enhance their quality of life. I mean, we think we're that, that we're the only black lung clinic in the country that's doing that work. Another thing that, that we think we're unique in is that we've decided that we're going to create a, a minor and a survivor uh, advisory panel. Um, both the Van Sant Clinic and the St. Charles Clinic will have three minors and a survivor who will uh, provide us with um, feedback, information, perspective. We'll check with them um, on um, different projects that we have going, make sure that we're taking their perspectives into account. Um, and we're fortunate that today we have with us here in Mansant, we have um, one of our um, mine representatives, Terry Ratliff, and our survivor representative, Lily Tiller. And I think um, Terry might, uh, might want to say a few words. Yeah. 
Good afternoon. I'm Terry Rattle. I'm a lifelong resident here in Buckhannon County. I just want to express my appreciation to Stone Mountain Health Services for what they do for the coal miners here in Virginia. It's a great service. Thank you. Thank you. So one of the things that, that Terry and Lily and their colleagues here, as well as the uh, folks down in St. Charles will be doing, one of the first things that they'll be doing, helping us with, is um, developing what we're calling a claim assistance fund. Uh, what we've noticed is that there are miners and survivors who we believe would be successful um, in their claims, but because of lack of funds, um, they're unable to continue um, taking their claim forward, either because they can't afford some of the testing or some of the additional um, evaluations by physicians and so on. And so instead of them having to abandon their claim, we're going to take donations into this fund um, that will um, then be, uh, allow us to um, help them potentially continue and, and be successful. And so the um, advisory panel is going to help us put together some guidelines that we'll be able to use um, to help distribute these funds, hopefully um, starting over the summer. <coughs> the last thing that I want to talk about um, is um, that we're, um, we've decided that we are going to um, create, Stone Mountain has decided that we're going to create what we're calling a Coal Mine Safety and Black Lung Disease Awareness Week, um, April 1st through 7th. Um, we have um, talked to uh, Congress about this, and um, Congressman Griffith has um, uh, volunteered to take the lead in trying to get a resolution through Congress, um, naming that across the country as um, um, Coal Mine Safety and Black Lung uh, Disease Awareness Week. And we have events scheduled every day uh, of that week, um, either ourselves or in collaboration. And I'd like to uh, read to you what's going to happen April 1st. April 1st is being sponsored. Uh, the events on April 1st are being sponsored by the health districts. Uh, and uh, I need to read this because it's technical. So Buchanan, Dickinson, Lee, and Wise County Health Departments are pleased to collaborate with Stone Mountain Health Services to offer two different pneumococcal vaccines to minors and, fam and their family members at no cost to the individual on April 1st, 2019 from 8.30 to 3.30 at these four health departments. Pneumococcal vaccines protect against serious infections caused by pneumococcal bac bacteria. CDC recommends pneumococcal polysaccharide vaccine, which is one type of the vaccine, for all adults 65 years and older, as well as adults 18 to 64 years with certain medical conditions or risk factors. For this age group, this includes individuals who smoke cigarettes, those who have chronic heart, lung, liver, or kidney disease, diabetes, immune compromising conditions such as cancer, HIV, sickle cell disease, alcoholism, damaged spleen, and cochlear implant or CSF leaks. Pneumococcal conjugate vaccine is indicated for all adults 65 years or older as well as adults 19 to 64 years old who smoke, those with chronic illnesses, diseases that weaken the immune system, and those with cochlear implant or CSF leaks. Um, they, the health department, asked that all minors and their family members that are interested in obtaining no-cost pneumonia vaccine on April 1st, please bring any vet copies of their vet immunization record, if possible, and a copy of their insurance card. So I want to thank the health departments for um, offering these at, um, vaccines at no cost for minors and their family members. Tremendous service to um, our communities. On April 2nd, um, we are um, um, pleased that the Southwest Virginia Workforce Development Board um, is sponsoring events on that day. And so I'll ask Tiffany to say a little bit about what they're doing. Um, our events uh, will be hosted at the Appalachian One Stop in Richlands and also at our affiliate site in Duffield. Uh, that is, the address is 225 Boone Trail Road. Um, and if you're in the Duffield area, you probably know where the, the Pioneer Center is. But those will be the two locations for our um, events on April the 2nd. It is open to the public um, starting at noon and we'll have like refreshments and um, have possibly some, some speakers and just have a good time those afternoons so feel free to bring your children come out um, and visit the one stops and learn about what services might be available um, and celebrate the tradition of um, minors and their sacrifice and the sacrifice of their families um, through our centers Thanks. on Wednesday April 3rd we'll be offering uh, free screening for minors uh, at our 
um, Van Sant and St. Charles clinics. Um, we'll be doing um, pulse ox readings, uh, blood pressure exams, hearing tests, and then a single pulmonary function uh, test exam for, for individuals um, to determine whether they uh, might have some medical condition or might um, qualify for black lung. We also are pleased that here in our Van Sant Clinic, um, the Appalachian College of Pharmacy um, will be joining us um, and offering some services. So I'm going to ask Sharon Deal, um, Director of Experiential Education at ACP, to say a little bit about what they'll be doing. Hello, we will be doing different uh, health screenings for diabetes control and then also a medication review with pharmacists so patients can bring in their medications and actually have a sit down with a pharmacist to discuss those. And we'll also do education on various health topics such as hypertension, diabetes, and asthma, COPD. I can't say enough about how much we appreciate the fact that um, our, our community partners are joining us in, in providing these services to our commu coal communities and to our um, miners and others. Um, it's, it says a lot about um, their willingness to, to help out that they jumped on at the opportunity to join us. Um, on April uh, 4th, we'll be having um, open houses at both of our Van Sant and St. Charles clinics. Um, we have sent out letters to all the schools um, across the region um, asking them to um, have their students or um, youth to either, uh, for the younger ones, do coloring pages or write stories or thank you cards, um, do something to honor um, members of the coal workforce and to bring those by our clinics um, on, April on, on April 4th um, and we'll either um, post them on, um, uh, there on site um, or take pictures and post them on the web, but we wanted to try and get the schools involved in, and hope that uh, we'll get a lot of um, things from students um, there at our, uh, at our clinics. On April 5th, Friday, we're having a uh, coal miner health and safety summit where we've invited uh, legislators, um, experts, uh, coal miners, former coal miners, as well as uh, representatives from the coal industry to come together so that we can sit down and talk and potentially come up with some ways to collaborate together to help promote the, the health and safety of miners, um, especially addressing the issues of coal dust um, and the impact that it's having on, on miners around the epidemic of uh, progressive massive fibrosis, which is um, complicated black lung. And then on Saturday and Sunday, April 6th and 7th, we've sent letters out to faith community leaders asking them to incorporate um, uh, some sort of um, awareness and recognition of um, the coal workforce and their families um, on, during their regularly scheduled events um, that weekend, April 6th and 7th, um, so that um, uh, they can um, uh, honor um, what the, the coal miners and other members of the coal workforce have meant to our community. And with that, I'll say thank you.